Do you ever feel like you've got a little voice in your ear whispering that you aren't good enough? Like your clothes aren't cool and your voice is dumb? Me too. Not too great. Petty doubt, a feeling of uncertainty about things of little importance. It's a tiny monster who sits in our ear and whispers constant challenges, questions, and fears into our brain. It tells us that we aren't good enough for even the littlest things. It's so small that we feel like we're strong enough to ignore it or brush it away like a lame mosquito. But after a while, its buzzing comments of petty doubt can really pile up and tear down our confidence. Like, maybe we feel our appearance doesn't match the way we want to look on the outside. Maybe our hair is greasier than we want it to be some days, or our thighs don't have a gap between them the way we see it in mainstream media. Maybe you have a speech for school and you can't handle the thought of being seen wearing the same cheap button-up from Target you've worn to school multiple times now. These things seem small, but these small annoyances with our appearances are capable of growing into larger self-confidence issues. The monster makes you spiral from thinking that you just look dumb into believing that you actually are dumb. And these doubts play into your everyday choices and interactions with others. Say you've always thought kickboxing looked super kick-ass, but you doubt that you have what it takes to be taken seriously by the other people at the gym. So you never go and you never take that class. You believe you suck, so why wouldn't everyone else think so too? Sometimes the smallest monsters can grow into the biggest defeaters. The moment we decide to flick this monster out of our ear and squash its creepy lumpy head is the moment where we look ourselves in the mirror and decide to believe in ourselves. The moment you finally look at yourself and say, hey, you're unique and strange and I love that about you. Maybe you're uncoordinated right now, so kickboxing might be hard, but you're gonna try it because you can. Because you believe in yourself. And those weird nails I have, well guess what? I can repaint them or decide to embrace the bright color and thick layers of glitter with confidence because I can and no one else cares. Do you ever feel like jam spread too thin? Uh, I do. <laughs> You've summoned the overcommitment monster. What's up? I'm the super charismatic and confident beast bursting out of your desire to succeed at everything. I'm here to encourage you to be as helpful to others as you can possibly be, even if it means adding hundreds of hours and stress to your already busy life. That's right, I've gone and invited you into my life again. <laughs> I even knew what I was getting into, but my need for high achievement up and got away from me. Yes, well I personally think this is gonna be great. You wanna be the best at your career and help your family the the most during the Thanksgiving holiday. Yeah, but I also want to make sure I'm being the best friend I can be and give back to the community, all while staying on top of the previous work commitments I've made. Yes, that's right. Don't let everyone down. <sighs> I don't think I have time for this. Get out of here! You can do it all! Can I, though? Time is an illusion, Megan. You're fine. As long as you're getting ahead at work, making that extra gluten-free pie for Aunt Vanessa so she doesn't feel left out at Thanksgiving, and you're volunteering in the community, and you're helping a friend with a favor, uh, no! I need to say no! No, you, you, you can, can do it all! I, I can't do it all. And that's okay. You see, overcommitment is what happens when we set our limits poorly. When we lose sight of our boundaries and just say yes to everything when we should be prioritizing for the things that are most important in our lives. The monster wants us to fear saying no because maybe that person will think we're a bad friend or our boss will think we can't keep up with our workload. But get this, it's okay to say no. Advocate for yourself and what you need. You're not rude or inconsiderate because you just don't have time to do something. And when you do feel strongly about doing something that you don't have time for, then negotiate negotiate and make some time for it in the future. Always remember that it's way better to keep a promise rather than need to explain that you overcommitted yourself and that person's request of you didn't make the cut. So stick to a schedule and be cool about it. Do your homework on Thursday so you can go to the sports ball game on Friday with all your friends and then get ice cream after and not feel bad about it. Don't fail. Beat this monster. Today, to be real with you, I'm feeling a little frustrated. I'm bothered by the fact that every day, as a person in society, no matter what you have going on in your life or what mood you're in, we're responsible for so many little things. Go to work, go to school, brush your teeth, eat a well-balanced meal. But before any of that, there's one very crucial task that we're faced with. Waking up.
Morning rage. Some just call it grumpy, but the fury of a thousand winds feels like it's just on the edge. My rage knows no bounds! We wake up inside storm clouds of doom and despair, suddenly feel blind to any positivity. And when this happens to me, I feel like someone is taunting my inner child to come out and tantrum all over everything. I've been reading a lot about how to tame this grumpy beast and found some interesting articles about how important it is to properly acknowledge your frustrations in the moment rather than deny, deny. Because when I'm in a bad way, I feel inclined to try and ignore the fact that I have toothpaste on my shirt, I'm working all the time, I've only had three hours of sleep, I haven't exercised in days, etc. But this results in me living my life in reaction rather than positive action. Because frustration is just pent up anger, and if you don't focus it productively, you have nowhere else to put it except onto everyone else. So how do we defeat this beast with some positive action? Well, it's not easy and I haven't figured it out entirely yet, but I feel like it's worth my patience if it might mean that I don't get consumed by this morning demon. I've read that the first thing to do when you wake up grumpy is just admit that you're grumpy. Close your eyes and don't label it as good or bad, but simply observe the sensations in your body. If it's taking a physical form and making you want to stomp your feet, hey, dude, stomp your feet. Jump up and down, get wild with it. You can also focus on your environment. Some studies say that lighting a candle, looking at the color green, spending time with a pet, and smelling the scents of citrus and lavender can all reduce your anxiety. Also, show yourself some freaking compassion. You might be acting like a three-year-old brat, but you've got a comforting adult somewhere inside you that can come out and soothe that poor child. Child. Next, you still have all this wrathful energy, so you want to try focusing that on something productive. Work on a project, get organized, do some art, hey, like me, or free write all your feelings for five minutes. There's a million other things you can do, but lastly, this one's going to sound annoying at first, but try smiling. It's a physiological reaction your brain creates when it's feeling good, so this will help fire some of that positive energy within you. It's never easy to cure the grumps, but through time and these practices, I think you'll be able to overcome the monster on the wrong side of the bed in no time. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode of Monster Brain. Please tap that like button and leave us a comment down below. If you're having a hard time this week transitioning from a negative emotion to a positive one, I encourage you to create about it, whatever that may mean to you. You can do drawing like I did, you can do clay, you can do snow. The possibilities of creation are endless. And if you don't feel like creating something from scratch this week, then hey, that's all right too. In the description below, you'll find a link where you can download the black and white version of the monster I drew today, and then you can color it in yourself. Please upload it to the internet using the hashtag Monster Brain and tag We Are Snarled and Megan Tenya so that we can see your work and support you. Subscribe to Snarl and I will see you next week.